In this video, we'll discuss cleaning up our build before installing our FPV system. As a reminder, this video accompanies our text guide on PropWash.com that you can use to follow the process step by step with pictures. So now that we have all our major components soldered and wired up, it's time to hook up our receiver and clean up any loose odds and ends on our quad. While this video showcases the general process, many of these steps will depend on your frame, the consumables you have on hand, and so forth. In order to keep this video streamlined, we'll reference additional guides when necessary that you can use if you have specific questions. Links to all of these guides can be found in the description. Alright, so for installing one of our final components, let's start with mounting our receiver. We like using double-sided tape for this, but Velcro will work fine as well. Find a nice, flat spot with enough room for your receiver, and then lay down some tape. In the previous video, we already attached the servo wires for our receiver to the flight controller. Now, we can route those wires to the receiver mount point. You can shorten these as needed, or route them around components to reach the correct location. Now that your servo wires are in the correct place, go ahead and connect them to the receiver. With everything connected, press the receiver onto the tape. Make sure that the antennas are facing outwards towards the rear of the frame, as we're going to route those up the standoffs and away from our propellers. To do so, cut a piece of heat shrink to the length of your standoff, fit the heat shrink over the standoff, and then run the receiver antenna between the two. Repeat this process for the other antenna and standoff. Next, grab two zip ties and run them up the same path of each standoff. These are going to be the supports for the antenna above the frame. Carefully cut the end of the zip ties to match the same length as the antennas. Be careful not to accidentally cut any of the antenna off here. You can leave a little bit of extra zip tie length here to be safe if needed. The zip ties are a cheap way to firmly hold your antennas above the frame. We'll cut some additional heat shrink to size and slide over the antenna and zip tie combo in a later step. Depending on your frame, you may have to mount the antennas differently. The zip tie combo is an easy to use method, but isn't the only option. Your main goal is to keep the antennas away from your props. At this point, you may find it helpful to attach the top plate from time to time to check the fit of various components. You don't need to screw in all the bolts, just attach a few to check for fit and make adjustments to your layout and wiring as needed. Case in point, if you plan to mount your battery on top of your frame, now is a good time to size out your battery wire. Take the two large battery wires that we soldered to the PDB, or flight controller depending on your build, and run them to where you want to mount your battery. Cut away any excess wire, and strip a bit of the silicon covering away. Just like before, we're going to tin the end of these wires. Remember, these larger wires can absorb quite a bit of solder, so make sure that they're completely coated. Before we connect these wires to our XT60, make sure to slide heat shrink onto each wire. This will eventually cover the exposed solder points and protect us from accidentally bridging these connections. Make sure you move the heat shrink though away from the end of the wire as you may accidentally shrink the wrap prematurely when applying heat with the soldering iron in the next step. Now that our wires are prepped, grab your XT60 connector. We want to fill each of the cups with solder and then connect our wires to each cup. Be sure to connect the positive wire to the positive cup and the negative wire to the negative cup. Each side of the XT60 should be labeled for easy reference. Additionally, helping hands can be extremely useful when soldering these connections. If you're having issues, check out our soldering guide where we talk at length about soldering XT60 connectors. After everything's soldered, we can secure our heat shrink. Remember our receiver antennas? Now we're going to cut two pieces of heat shrink to the size of our zip tie antenna combo. Slide this over both pieces and heat to secure. Similarly, you can move the heat shrink onto the solder points of your XT60 connectors and shrink them in place. With our battery connection in place and our receiver hooked up, we have a quad that should be ready to fly. Before plugging anything in though, we recommend testing your connections for shorts. To do this, we highly recommend probing your XT60 connector with a multimeter. Similarly, using a smoke stopper between your quad and battery can help protect your brand new equipment. Again, if you want to learn more about using a multimeter and smoke stopper, check out the guides in the description. And finally, if you haven't already, you can secure the ESCs to the frame using zip ties as you can see here. Similarly, you can attach your battery strap at the desired mounting point. We also recommend attaching a non-slip surface or Velcro here to provide extra security for your battery. If you're planning to fly line of sight, you can secure the top plate to the frame and move on to our software setup guide. On the other hand, if you're ready to fly FPV, we have one more video in our build series that covers setting up the FPV system. We'll see you there.